this week. Nelson and I demonstrate the effects of how wrapper binder and filler are super important to the overall flavor of a premium cigar. To accomplish this task, we have John Triano from Alec Bradley Cigar Company here in studio to walk us through this process. Together, we will be smoking different components of the cigar and discussing what types of flavors that we're getting out of them. We have wrapper, binder, and filler all separate and then to be combined with an Alec Bradley cigar that we're going to try to guess what it is. We are going to break this all down for you. If you've never been to a blending seminar, Stogie Geeks, this is a great place to start so you can kind of see how they go. Um, by the way, Happy New Year to Stogie Geeks. Hope 2021 is uh, healthy and happy for all of us. And don't forget, Nelson will have news. Stogie Geeks episode 351 starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Josepa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. So we also have remote... Drew, who is remote over in Texas? Look at you. You got some Stogie Geek swag going on in the background. Got my banner. Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm all set up for the uh, Stogie Geek uh, mobile lounge. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Happy New Year, Stogie Geeks. It is 2021. I am your host, Joe Hosempa. Privilege and an honor to be here. I'm super excited about today. I'm super excited about this year. Just can't wait for Nelson's news segment uh, here on Stogie Geeks. I want to say, hope everyone has had a uh, safe and healthy and happy holiday season and a happy new year. We're back at it. Uh, I'm super excited. I want to introduce you to soon to be internet sensation, Mr. Nelson. Nice to be back. Happy New Year, Stogie Geeks. Joe, thanks for having me back. I'm super excited to have you back, man. Happy I'm New super Year. excited for this episode. This is going to be a stellar show. This is totally different. I'm really digging this. Yes, yes. The concept of this show, like everything else in Stogie Geeks world, happened six months ago, and then it comes to fruition uh, at the Lightning Strike event. And today is a Lightning Strike event. Um, happy to welcome... Uh, first time uh, here on Stogie Geeks, John Triano from Alec Bradley Cigar Company. John, welcome. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. John is, John is a, 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 without using the cliche word over and over again, John is an OG in the industry. He's been around for a minute. Do you know what that minute. means, John? No, I'm not familiar with it. It's original gangster, John. <laughs> okay. <laughs> John, John is an OG. Um, he uh, has put together a blending seminar for us now and end goal right is the obviously we all know from listening to story geeks and new to story geeks cigars are made of components wrapper binder and filler right the purpose of this is to take the wrapper binder and filler get the components smoke it together guess the alec bradley cigar that they're doing there 
in between the commentary, because it would get very boring of just smoking through that, uh, we're going to have some news. We're going to talk about John, his position at Alec Bradley, what he did before, all types of super cool stuff in the industry, maybe some some uh, interesting stories and stuff like that. Um, so that is going to be uh, today's show. Next week, we will have Sticks of the Week and continue, but I, I wanted to kind of treat this uh, separate because uh, it's going to be a super educational learning experience i'm actually super excited this is like for me personally john this is where like my story geeks journey has come to a circle right and what i mean by that is in my opinion we all go through little circles and little journeys and whatnot but i met paul at a blending seminar oh wow and so like paul always knew of me and i knew of paul and you know i've watched story geeks way way back when and like you know and then all of a sudden it's like you know it's funny because when i met paul he's like hi i'm paul as it's like yeah i know who you are <laughs> you know what i mean and then it's like you know hi i'm joel zemper and he's like oh yeah you have a radio show blah blah, blah. and and it's super cool because it's kind of like coming i don't know it's i don't know at least that's how my brain Full works. circle at least that's how my brain works uh if you've been listening to the show for for a while you know that how my brain works is how my mouth works and that's either a good thing or a bad thing <laughs> Debatable, <laughs> right? And then, and then there you go from there. So, John, um, let's jump into it because we have a lot of uh, smoking to do. We got uh, to cleanse our palate. We have uh, soda water so that we can um, uh, take it from there. But what's what, what, what's going on here? Well, the first uh, the first thing we have are three puritos. The pur- these purito puritos are single tobacco single leaf tobacco Mm -hmm. so the filler and the binder are all the same leaf uh the number one is uh halopoly hedo okay and uh so the first thing we're going to do is get going cut and and light light it up it's all actually it's already been cut yeah no cutting needed i'm taking my oh it's already been (laughs) cut oh okay gotta put away the alec bradley sponsor cutter right (laughs) yeah Right. Okay. So I guess we're ready to jump in. Let's do it. Sure. Oh, that. Ooh, retro hail. Bang. So okay. Take. I. So I have a tough time focusing in in, in regular life. Let let alone in in my story geek show. What are we smoking right now? This is a Jalapa Ligero. Okay. And this is the binder. This is. A part of the filler. Okay. Now, typically, when we when we do this at an event, and you know, I'll do these for all of, any of my retailers that I call on, uh, and we're sitting around a table, we'll ask, okay, what flavors are you getting? What are you getting from it? Where's it hitting on your tongue? On the retro hill, where do you? Mm-hmm. What are you tasting? So, I'll open it up. I'm getting some sweetness, definitely. Getting some sweetness. Yeah. Uh, non retro hail, sweetness, right? Um, uh, dryness on the non retro hail, right? It's dry. It's, it, it's dry on the palate. Retro hail, I got to say, like spice. I'm trying to figure it out. I don't want to be cliche and say it's pepper, right? Um, it's white pepper. Is it white pepper? Okay. <laughs> no, have He's you, not revealing. Have, have your other uh, uh, seminars people said that? I would say that everybody says the dryness, yep. certainly, yes. and uh, and a peppery uh, component. Mm-hmm. Now, this is typically, this is what's happening in Honduras, in Nicaragua, the Dominican, in Mexico, wherever cigars are being blended. Mm-hmm. This is how they, they go about it. They're going to take the, the components that they think are going to work together. Mm-hmm. And as as you see, as we progress, you're going to see what we're going to do uh, with uh, with sample number two. All right. If, All right. I'm not getting white pepper on this. I'm getting more like a a baker spice, like a crushed red pepper. No. Or no pepper. No. No. Like okay. A, so okay. So it is spice. Let, 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 let's it is take a some spice. time to define this. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it is a spice. Um. John's just looking at it. <laughs> no, John. No, that's what they do. That's just okay. Let us have fun. This is yeah, this, this is what it's all no, about. This is, this is fun. You know, I think my, my my kid does this at school. It's like kinetic sand for cigars, <laughs> right? This is like this is like us playing in the kinetic sandbox 
Um, for you story geeks that don't have kids, you can Google kinetic sand. It's all over my living room floor. <laughs> Since Santa came. <laughs> I have to look it up. I have no idea what that is. It's it's sand. It's it's I don't know. <laughs> um so so yeah. Uh non retro. I wanted to find non retro because I think that's a little bit easier, right? Um complete dryness there. Uh lingering uh it, it's 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 the 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 taste is is lingering, but it's lingering on the front of the palate. What I mean by that is like like up here, it's not lingering yeah, like I back agree here. With, I agree with the front. Right, right. It's lingering on the front of the palate. Um, however, I can taste it on the sides of my tongue in the back. You? No? Am I going too crazy here? But that's... No, that's, absolutely on the sides of the tongue. Yep, yep. That, that's my original um, uh, d description from the uh from the non retro hail right i do want to take some time and and try to see if we can identify this spice right i should have went to my spice rack and snorted a bunch That's, of different spices i wish we had a wheel <laughs> here or something right they have a cigar flavor wheel. wheel a flavor wheel we don't need a flavor wheel we're stogie geeks i don't cook i don't know oh, I don't, oh they have a flavor <laughs> wheel for cooking no i didn't even know that they do actually I'm sure they do. That's crazy. You're yeah. right. Like I'm, I'm struggling. I'm having the same struggle. I, I'm getting the spice. I, I can't. I, I don't think it's white pepper though. It's, you know, what's going to be crazy because it's separate. Like our minds are trying to do that, and maybe if we, and, and again, we, 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 we've never gotten to the other two. The other flavors, yeah. Maybe we'll be like, oh no, that's white pepper, but this is X. You know what I mean? Has that happened in you? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um. Are we remotely close on the retro Oh, absolutely. Okay. The, 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 the tongue, in the back of the tongue, dryness, certainly. All right. So take us through. So if they were to build this, do they actually take the components sometimes and, 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 and separate them? Yes. Okay. Uh, normally, that's how they do it. Uh, I've been to factories in Mexico where I've seen that, and, uh, and I know that's how we do it down in Honduras and Nicaragua. Where we'll take the components. Mm -hmm. and say, somebody will have an idea. Uh, it, it, I'm I'm going to have my my own blend come out sometime in June or July, mm -hmm. and I just had an idea of what I thought would work together. Put it together when we were in Honduras in uh, 2019, and uh, kept my notes. And when the project came about to do our own blends, I had my notes put the notes sent them down to corporate and they went down to uh, honduras put it together and they tweaked a little and uh from what i gather uh just waiting for for my samples to come up for me to try the cigar is uh pretty tasty mm. it, it, i'm excited to uh hear and talk about that blend Anything on citrus? I'm getting a. I, I was just gonna say, but I was waiting for like everything to settle. Has that retro hail changed? Because yeah, it did at the it, finish. Yes. I'm getting a sit almost a yes at the finish a of zestiness. the retro. It's yeah, a, it's a zesty. It's like spraying a lemon up your nose. You know what I did, like Joe? That. Is I I I, did, I took a sip of the, uh, the soda, soda water. water. I did that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. This is fascinating. Yeah, definitely said some some citrus. Uh, coming through uh, there, and now the non retro hail is zingy on the tongue, penetrating, um, at least on my palate, more towards the center. Well, it is a lijero, yeah. And refresh the story, geeks listener, of the of the components of this. It's from uh, uh, Jalapa Valley. This is from Jalapa. Yeah, the uh, the uh, Pur Purito number two. It's from Trojes, and it's a Viso, and uh, the uh, the last is going to be from Trojes also, and it's a. So the Viso is the uh, bottom. Alijero. Viso's in the middle. Okay, and in, in the middle. Well, I always thought uh, above the, above the sand leaves. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But I always thought like it was you have four layers in. The viso is on the the bottom layer. Is that am I? Above the above the volato. Yeah. Uh, 
W Valada. That's right. Okay, I'm getting the V. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. See, I'm going back in my like 2017 uh, <laughs> curriculum of 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 of, of, a, of a leaf. <laughs> Lots happened since then. The diagram of a leaf. Yeah, I probably still have baby brain. <laughs> um. Yeah. I'm, I'm, oh, oh, it, it comes back. The pepper. Yeah. 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 Like I mean, like not quite eye watering, but it's there. It's there. It comes. That's. It's so crazy how it fades. It it fa- It really fades in and out, which probably. Depending, I'm, I'm I'm speculating here because we we have two more uh, to go through. Um, I wonder if this is the layer that's responsible for cigar transition. Because yeah, I see and what unless, you're saying. Yeah, unless they all transition, I don't know. I've done. I've been to uh, two blending seminars. This is my third, right? Um, I blend. I've been to multiple ones, but if you count. Like the ones they are, I've been to the one by Jose Blanco, and and the one by Man- Manuel Noah. Two uh, different methodology of delivery for the blending seminar. Um, yours uh, mimics more of the um, Manuel Noah from La Aurora um, way, 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 way. You're smoking the three the the three different components, uh, but. What they did was they took the Preferino line, and so I think there's five at the time off the top of my head with that. Uh, if I'm wrong, email Nelson at still, uh, still Um and, and then we, we, we did that so you can separate that, and that was a prefer- it was focused on the Preferino line and then bringing them all together there. Um, and then the Jose Blanco one was you had one stick it was it was it was uh uh five and a half by probably 54 ring gauge that had the transitions so it wasn't like a candy cane a, i'm sorry it wasn't like a baba pole it was more like a, a a a sectional cigar that had all of the different sections and this is you uh in my opinion it's a total separation right so um what layer is this number one of the cigar it's that's just part it's part of the cigar i'm not sure oh yeah the yeah. the ten pen on the blend sorry sorry <laughs> sorry oh, what a rookie move which cigar is it <laughs> this is my first episode of stogie geeks so nelson as we um transition uh to the next stick do you have some news for us to to oh, kind of well i i'm picking up something else i'm wondering oh. if you're getting it too okay now i don't know if this is an expansion on the citrus i was getting because it was subtle but it's getting a little floral I'm getting a little floral on it, so I don't know if it's the citral citrus. No, it, no, no. Yeah, it's it's yeah. Okay. See, I wish I had a I, I wish I wish I had a piece of paper with a pen, but I'm okay with you need it. A dry erase board. No, I, I have a computer in front of me, but I'm gonna I don't need a piece of paper or pen. I can go back and watch this. This is probably gonna be the first Story Geek episode. I'm gonna go back and watch. I don't have to take notes. I can go to StoryGeeks.com after this. What a what a what. It's been a while since I've been behind the microphone. I'm. Still in vacation mode. Not not that I was ever on vacation, but you know. Uh yeah, complete. Okay, so we've gone pepper, sides of the tongue, strong, but not we we don't really know if it's pepper yet because we haven't gone through the other three. We've gone through some sort of a spice. Then we've gone through a transition for at least me, going from sides of the tongue to the center of the tongue, and it going to refresh my memory. Going to um a citrus, zesty there. Yep, and then now I'm getting like an opening up of 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 a bouquet. Okay, so like, yeah, well, so all right, yeah, great. L- like if like honestly, I don't know, it's coming to my head. Here we go, watch out. All right, what the hell, Joe's gonna say next? It's like if I took a freaking dozen roses and like whiffed them at you. Yeah, like like uh, I'm getting. That's, yeah, it's, it's I, like I, it's like a it's like a passing. Of, yeah. a, of a bouquet. Does that does that make sense? Does that make sense? No, sure. that's a better description than my floral. Well, well so I'm, trying, absolutely. I'm trying to respect the story geeks listeners. Who are not viewing, right? Uh, you know, sixty percent of our audience does listen to us just an audio only. Um, that's crazy. I find that fascinating. But uh, uh, anyway, um, yeah, uh, it, it's like a, it's like whisting of uh, of a spray. But the, I feel like the pepper's been there the whole time. It just there was increases and decreases throughout, and not super strong at all. Mm. Uh, I definitely got sweetness right off the beginning there. For sure, and that went away 
pretty much immediately. Uh, but yeah, same thing. I'm, I'm getting a little more on the retro on the back of my palette. Now I am. The yeah. more I get into this. Yeah. 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 Now I am as well. See, the thing about this also is it sets up a dialogue or, or four foot. When we do this at stores, I've done it with as many as a dozen people at a time. And it sets up a conversation and everybody reacts to it and, and puts in their information. Right. And then when it all comes down to the end, everybody can kind of say, oh, yeah, now I get it. How it all comes together. How it all comes together. Sure. But I wonder if this type of makeup is responsible for the transition of how a cigar transitions. Yeah, you said that earlier. And when I got the to floral, me, I was thinking maybe Joe's onto something. To me, it's drastic, right? But then again, we really don't take uh, blends and separate them and smoke them, right? That's not our, our job position. Uh, if we worked in a factory, I'm assuming some guy would probably say in Spanish, this gringo, they all do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but you know, it's just my opinion. Like, it, it, <laughs> And maybe as we get through this, like we'll we'll find out that they all do that, right? I don't I don't know. And and maybe within their element, if they all do that, um, uh, what are they looking for? Right. Like, does it do it too soon? Thing that bing bang boom, dude. I could do one of these like once a month. This is, I mean, like, this, this, this is so. This gives me a completely different perspective on cigar. It just really does, like just this one exercise we're going through right now you're only 33 percent actually uh, exactly. no you're 25 percent exactly but i've never done it i've never broken it down to this level right mm -hmm. and i'm i guess i'm more surprised that i've gone through this many different flavors uh, just with, with this right right, right. well Can you know you get by these like just separately no. yes because <laughs> i would smoke this again <laughs> I, I i would I, I would i would smoke this again and just be like yo man i just want something freaking just whacked out and tricked out yeah like you it's have a, some filler it's like a, it's like a tricked <laughs> cigar right i guess you know um for any pipe smokers like duh that's what pipe smoking's for you know what I, mean? <laughs> I don't know but no it, it is it is different like you i, I am getting a plethora of transition Ooh. I like it. John, uh, before we get to Nelson's news, um, talk to us about, you as as we finish this, talk to us about any, anything you want to add and what your position is um, over at Alec Bradley, uh, how long you've been there, uh, what it's like, uh, you know, um, some of the experiences that you've had uh, over there at Alec Bradley. I want to get to that point first. This way, if we start to lose listeners, we're just going to fast forward through the thing. At least they'll pay attention to the to, to this part. Well, I've been with Alec Bradley. I'll, we started my fourth year uh, in March. Uh, I took a two-year hiatus after being in the industry for 20 years with two different companies. Uh, and we'll get to that as well. <laughs> Maybe the next stick or the next uh, section. Uh, it's going to be a lot of no comments then. Uh, it's Ooh. a great company. I cover uh, basically the Northeast, all of New England, Long Island, and uh, upstate New York. Uh, I'm on the road all the time, driving a lot, but uh, I love to drive. I love traveling. I love my customers. I've got the, I, I deal with the best people in the world. Uh, we all have a passion for the same thing, and that's cigars. And uh, sometimes I pinch myself because I can't believe I get paid to do this. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I agree. Uh, what do you think about um, some cigar companies uh, hiring sales force and some um, obviously laying off some, some sales force when we're all probably... Uh, when each company is going through like the same thing, right? In other words, we're going through COVID. There's going to be some inventory uh, backup of some sort. Uh, there's going to be some resource uh, shortage of some sort, uh, either with COVID or distribution and stuff like that. You don't have to get into any specifics, but like, like as a rep, like what's your, what's your role, and 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 how vital is that role for? a uh company to take it seriously and, and, and i'm looking for just basically your answer because i find it very fascinating when it comes to cigar news that like some companies are going through a hiring process for a force and some are going through a layoff process well 
anybody can make a cigar. Uh, it, 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 it's during, during the, the first boom, anybody who had money could go down to Honduras, go down to Nicaragua, go to the Dominican, either uh, find somebody that was making cigars and pay them a nickel more per cigar to put their band on it. Uh, but, but not everybody can sell a cigar. Not everybody, just because the cigar is good, is going to necessarily translate into uh, success in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. You really need somebody out there shaking hands, slapping backs, uh, waving the flag, whatever you want to call it, interacting with the c consumer. That, that's that's the that's the the big thing. Uh, you, you know, owners. Let's face it. The universal buying motive is what's in it for me. Uh, nobody buys anything if because it's all self-centered. What what is it going to do for me? But the the real per the person that in, where where the rubber hits the road is the consumer. And when you when, when the the best nights I have are I, after having dinner in a uh, in a restaurant instead of going back to the hotel, going to a cigar lounge, going to a, a store that's open in the evening and sitting down with the customers and just talking to them. What, what, what makes you excited about cigars? What do you like? What don't you like? Uh, what sizes do you like? Why? Uh, I, I, I was born naturally curious and I always, as a kid, I was always asking questions and it's still, it, to, it, that's helped me to this day. Mm -hmm. mm. I, I think it's, it's, even outside of the premium cigar industry, like sales is an art, right? It's an art form. And it's like, you know, uh, if companies were looking to cut costs both in and out of this industry or whichever, they always look for sales and marketing and do that. And it's like, that's your boots on the ground. That's your people who are waving the flag. That's people who are bringing in the, the revenue, right? It's where the rubber meets the road. Like you said, they're bringing in the revenue to, um, you know, uh, get the message out there, right? And 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 do that, and in whatever way that your your sales force is built, right? It could be brokers, could be in house reps. Some use a mix across North America and the world, right? Uh, you know, it, I'm sure it's regionally specific. I'm sure it's profitable. Um, both of them have their pluses and minuses. Bringing in an in house rep versus a broker, um, you know, and, and and that's a business model that that they need to figure out, but. At the end of the day, like retailers, unless they're aren't constantly researching all the facings in their humidor and chasing cigar news and whatnot, the other one who's ultimately going to bring them the quote unquote la latest and greatest of the product, or the other one who's going to come up with creative ideas for that retailer to make money. Absolutely, uh, there, there's there, there's no doubt that as, at, as much as retailers want to know about cigars, they don't know everything. You can bring a retailer an idea, it can take off. Uh, you can bring a retailer idea, it can flop. But the most important thing is the retailer knows that you're trying to help them. It's a partnership and you want your product to move out. As bad as 2000, 20 was uh i got my final numbers 2019 versus 2020 i was down nine percent mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean that that's that's just incredible mm -hmm. uh for the fact that uh uh well on, on a personal note i spent two months in a hospital bed sure and uh uh and then uh i i, I was released um March Friday the thirteenth of March, mm. and on seventeenth they shut the world down. Yes, yeah. yeah. And you gotta remember, we had like a two month lockdown, true lockdown, right? Uh, in some way, shape, or form. Um, I want to hold that thought and continue for the sake of the show. Well, can I can I just segue in? So something that Joe said actually triggered uh, something with me. So I know you sit down with consumers. You were saying when when you're when you're go visiting the lounges, but you know, obviously, you're there to help promote the not just the cigars, but the the retail shop as well. But I'm thinking, do you get feedback from the consumers or ideas from the consumers that help you also increase the sales? Oh, certainly. Uh, 
if if you find out if you find out that a particular group uh, likes a particular size, and maybe the retailer doesn't realize it. Uh, maybe they've never asked him because traditionally uh, he he doesn't carry a, a Gordo or six by sixty, or maybe he's carrying too many six by sixties and doesn't have enough Toros or Coronas. Um, uh, the the funny thing is. Uh, when we introduced gate, introduced Gatekeeper, we introduced it in a Corona. Uh, the, the the cigar took off because people wanted that blend in that size. Right. Yeah, and, the, and see, I find that interesting because I've had a lot of discussions with retail shop owners, and you know they're all dealing with the same. They're trying to sell cigars, but at the same time, it's like, how do you pitch these new? facings that are coming out or even existing facings that they have in their humidor and i think you're hitting on one of the things that's missing and that's why i think i think reps are important because you're getting that interaction like you just said you're hearing from consumers things that the shop owner didn't even know right right mm. like th they should know these things from their own consumers so i i, I think the reps are the unsung heroes of the cigar industry. <laughs> Let's continue that thought when we light up the next one. I want to just keep this moving so it's not as boring as a, a, a virtual um, or a, a, a listening exercise for the listeners. What's your last thoughts on this? Well, I mean, I liked it. I, I, I'm baffled by the, I'm going to go back to what Joe kind of hit on the transitions. I was not expect. I just wasn't expecting that. Yeah. I thought it was going to be a little more consistent throughout. Uh yeah yeah I expected it to be uh that that too, uh towards the end flavor profile went back to the original flavor for me, so a little bit of spice, Nelson's word pepper my word we're gonna hold that thought because we have two more sticks to go through uh there and then um and then from there uh that lingering dryness was relevant throughout except. When that bouquet of right, not the citrus, but that bouquet, we were getting kind of more towards waving the back roses. Door. The waving roses. I don't know. I'll try to. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, uh, John, it's time to go through the. Actually, we should probably. Um, I'm gonna take a sip of water. Clear right? the palate. Yeah. Stand. Actually, drinking. What are you drinking? Like soda water? Yeah. That, is that the right? Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, now we're on one dash two. One dash two. Okay. Oh, so this is for us to do again on a separate time. Well, no, what we're going to, well, what we're going to do after we smoke about half of this. Yep. We're going to light number one, the full number one. Oh, okay. And we're going to smoke the two together. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. I see. And then we're going to, ah, I see where you're going okay. with this. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. So we're not going to have to necessarily go through the whole transition. Then. No. Gotcha. Okay. So the number, number two cigars from the Trojas Valley, it's a, it's the Viso. Okay. I'm going to fire it up. I see the process now. It's coming together. So technically, if we go one, two, and three, it should mimic this. That's the goal. Bingo. Ah. See? I, didn't, I did not see that coming. <laughs> Creamy out of the gate. Oh, I didn't even know. Oh, I'm so excited. Really? Uh. Cool. One, John two. is stoic. He's not giving anything up. <laughs> nah. He's got his poker face on. I have a tell, but I won't. Uh... Oh yeah. Can you buy these? Like, <laughs> so, like can you? Like these would sell. Like, uh... <laughs> I mean, like, uh, yeah. I would, know, I would just rock these. See, now I'm getting Definitely flavor. Definitely creamy in the beginning here. I'm getting flavor on the tip of my tongue. And I'm getting a little pepper, too. Okay. Retro Hail is completely not as strong as the first one. One, one, Viso. Yeah. Right. 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 Um, I'm definitely getting more, I think, more peppery on this one. Now, yeah. Hold on. Let me continue a little bit. Let's, mm. con let's continue the discussion about the reps. I, I want to back up what Nelson and John had said. Um, I think it's super important, right? And it happens in every industry, right? 
um, you know, uh, uh, you know, business could be down for whatever reason, uh, and they look at sales and marketing, and then they do that. And uh, in my opinion, from watching other businesses, unless they have a fallout plan, i.e., someone's going to buy them, they're going to change the distribution, whatever the bigger picture is from corporate, right? Um, getting rid of sales reps, and if that's your only move. From what I've seen in businesses, that's the beginning of a a dark time for any company, right? And so I agree. You know, and so uh, how it relates to premium cigars. Uh, recently, right before uh, I think it was right after Thanksgiving, uh, Miami Cigar announced that they were just laying off sixty percent of its sales force. Is that news? Is that not news? It's yet to be determined. It's sixty percent. They're probably going to keep the regions that are profitable for having there. Maybe they'll switch the brokers, do what they got to do. Okay, fine, get it. But that can't be a methodology just to save the money. It needs to be something else. Or it'll, it'll, be, it'll be a darker time um, for them. But may, maybe they might switch the distribution. Maybe they might pick up more brands. Maybe they might. You know, you really don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So I think it's, it's super important. The only industry that I've ever seen that could do what you just suggested was years ago Motorola invented the cellular telephone. Mm -hmm. And the Motorola sales force thought they were gonna be rich salesmen because they were gonna be selling cell phones. And they just took, did a, 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 a three, 180 degree turn mm -hmm. and turned it into a completely retail distribution market. Sure. And yes. it succeeded. Well, because the quickest way to get to retail is, I'm sorry, quickest way to get to consumer, any industry, is to retail. <laughs> well, and, and the cell phones sell themselves. Right. Well, you need them, right? I mean, well, nowadays, the like computers. Well, especially back then. But, but back then, yeah. Yeah, back then it was ten cents a minute. It was bag phones and three yeah. nights and weekends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's the only industry. Call me after seven. <laughs> oh, exactly. I remember that. <laughs> Holy shit! Yo, I'll talk to you later, man. Call me after seven. Peace. <laughs> Don't call me now. I just always rocked the freaking retardedly big cell phone bill. And did you have the bag? I had the bag phone. I didn't know your little one bag phone. I, I didn't. I, I I had the bag. But it wasn't mine. So, like, my parents had a bag phone. Yeah. And at the time, I got my license. So, it was like, please take the cell phone. And da 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 So, like, I had one and had access to them. I remember yeah. them. But my first cell phone that I bought on my own plan and whatnot was not a, uh, a bag phone. No. I remember getting an $800 bill. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's where I learned about nights and weekends. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. I, yeah. Yep. Ridiculous. Um. Stronger spice, yes, but um, really, really separation when it comes to the creaminess and smoothness. Unless you're retro hail and then you get the spice. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm not uh, getting as much transition with this one. No, it's more consistent. That's a, yep, that's a good point. Yep. Mm. Awesome, Nelson. Give us a a, a, a news tidbit. To do, 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 do. Yeah, everybody, everybody, stop, stop the press, listen. Nelson has news. Here's some news. I don't even know where to begin. Uh, taxes, taxes, and more taxes. We know taxes are killing, uh, especially, I think New York is one of the worst, but Colorado also one of the highest tax rates in the country uh, just increased their tax rate again. So they, the average cigar, they were charging 40% on the wholesale price. They now upped that January 1st to 50%. So basically today, if you're paying, uh, what's the example I have here, 1330 for a cigar, uh, that's now going to be 1425 But that's not it, Colorado, because in 2024, it's going to go up to 56% of the wholesale price, and then again to 60% in 2027. So by 2027, that $13 cigar is costing you almost $16. Okay, so $3 more per cigar. Cool, got it. Uh, New York is what seventy four, seventy five. John, what's New York? It just changed. I don't think anyone comes 75%. close. Seventy five percent. Seventy five percent. Yeah, no one comes close to New York, right? Uh, no, not true. Oh, not true. Not worse? not not true. Definitely. Cle uh, the, clearly, you don't listen to Stogie Geeks. Not today. No, clearly you don't. 
listen to Story Geeks. I have said this multiple times on the show. There's a cigar company that grew out of the most taxed region that I know of. So we're gonna get to that story too. What do you think, John? What's the most? Uh, I, if I'm if not mistaken, Vermont's like ninety two percent. Yep, nine, Vermont's ninety two, and, and Minnesota's ninety six. <laughs> and Crux Cigars is out of Minnesota. My own. So you you had Crux, C R U X. I've had Crux. Yeah, yeah Crux. That yeah, we've interviewed them on the show. Super cool dudes. Um, the uh, uh we've had. We've had, I've met the originator of Blender, Mass Blender, there. Um, having a total brain fart. I apologize. I'm going back in the 2015 arena there. But yeah, he owned a cigar shop um, at the time, probably still does. But yeah, taxes higher. It's in the 90s. Shit. And um, they they do it out of there. And I know it's different if you're distribution and all of that stuff. But like, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, Minnesota's like in the middle and the north, right? Yeah. So yeah, Minnesota and then Vermont are um, the highest, um, just going from memory. Yeah, yeah, and well, then you have New York. You go to our neighbors to the north. Canada's even worse. It's over a hundred percent. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and 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 that's that's gonna come soon. Like here to the U.S. Well, well, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about like the the, the Canadian versus versus that. I'm talking about like higher taxes. Especially with um, states local, right? All politics is local. Okay, it starts at local, right? You vote locally. Yeah, sure. You know, it, it's the local, right? Um, you know, th- they're going to be looking for ways to uh, capture revenue, right? And how do you capture revenue? Now we're fortunate here in the state of Rhode Island where we have a cap tax uh, here at fifty cents. So each stick is, is, is capped at fifty cents. Connecticut's the same. Massachusetts is not. It's still forty-two or forty-eight percent. Forty. Forty. Okay. Yep. See. So, uh, you know. So, so, uh, you know, I, I would expect, like Massachusetts. Now, I know that some some retailers had fought in Massachusetts to try to do a cap tax and whatnot. Why would they? Right. If you're Snickers and you're charging a dollar fifty for a candy bar, making the price up. Mm. And now it's taxed at thirty cents a piece because you know there's an obesity tax or something like that. Jeez. Try not to give any politicians any ideas, right? But if there's an obesity tax and whatnot, the Snickers is still going to get his buck fifty, right? And then you have the tax, and guess what? Consumers are going to pay more. Getting to your point, that sixteen dollars cigar is now nineteen dollars. Consumers are going to pay. I mean, if you don't believe me, all you do is look at the cigarette tax, right? Rhode Island, I believe it's four fifty a pack. Just in the state of Rhode Island, uh, two years ago went from four twenty five to four fifty. Now we and and th- we went to when I say we, I mean the premium industry of of uh, premium cigar industry cigar retailers of Rhode Island went to the hearing because there was also a uh, effort to take our cap tax and go from uh, fifty to eighty, which was on the board there. Right? Um, we stayed at fifty, but the cigarette tax went from four and a quarter. To 450 here in Rhode Island. Why am I bringing this up? Uh, when we all spoke in front of the uh, the le- the legislature to plead our cases, like there were retail stores talking about like tobacco cigarettes and lottery are the lead in. It's not the gas of the gas station. Wow. So more people, and they they had the numbers, and and, and to me it was it was a fascinating in it was a fascinating. Time because it's like the numbers like sixty or eighty not not, not eighty like sixty or seventy percent of the consumers stop at the gas station for gas um for like stop at the gas station for cigarettes and lottery. But I think the original point you were making was that regardless of the cigarette taxes going up, they're still buying it. Of course they are, right? Of course they are. That's my point. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like that's my point. Was I not making my point? Probably wasn't making my point. What else is new? Well, we get the lottery and <laughs> cigarettes. No, because I wanted to. I wanted to prove that consumer behavior is not going to be change. influenced by yeah. tax, and that's why I think a lot of retailer. Now there will be some. There will be some who say, "Oh no," but like at the end of the day, you want your cigar. Well, you know, there's... you need your cigarette. <laughs> you know but do, I mean? you, do you think? And if we go down a rabbit hole, Joe, shut me up. But. Do you think, will it change, granted, yes, uh, let's say we all agree, they're going to keep smoking cigars, right? But do they pivot to lower price cigars now? Because maybe the ones they were buying are too high. 
Because I'm wondering if that's what happened with the cigarette industry, right? Did they go from, hey, I'm buying Marlboros to I'm buying, you know, I don't know what a crappy cigarette brand is. But I don't know. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah I got gotcha. you. Walmart cigarettes, you know? <laughs> sure, sure. I don't know. Like, I'm wondering if that would happen to the industry. Oh, it does. Uh, it does. It does for some consumer. Remember, consumer behavior, and well, I want to get to this on a sales point with John, may, maybe in the next stick, about how, like, some sticks go hot, 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 and then they go cold, cold, cold. It's like right. a freaking horse, right? This horse is ready to run the preakness, and this all the, then all of a sudden the freaking horse gets in the mud and stops and doesn't move, right? right? We'll, 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 we'll get to that type of consumer behavior. But consumer behavior gets judged in, in buckets, right? They call it economies of scale, right? For if, if, if you want to get analytical about it, right? And there will be some who will say, you know something? I used to smoke this um, diamond crown, but now I'm going to switch to whatever version that, that, that they, they might be. It might be within the J.C. Newman portfolio, or I'm used to smoking this Placencia, or I'm used to smoking this, you know, uh, Alec Bradley, right? But I'm going to switch um, there. And I think it's tough because the company has to make a decision to play the tax game, right? If it's raised by $3, do I lower my price by $0.50, cents, make less, go there for the retail? Like, all those come into play. But at the end of the day, the consumer's going to want what they want. Maybe they'll go to those, but then maybe they'll say, hey, well, uh, instead of having two, I'll just have one a day. Right. And then, and then they did it. It's now, just economics. It, it, does, it does affect the retailer. But I think as consumers, we, we make choices like that all the time. All the time. And because of online, not the ability to purchase online, but the ability to be educated online, we make those decisions a heck of a lot faster. Let's get back to this before we go down any more of a rabbit hole. N not as much transition. Would you agree? I This thing has been consistent throughout. Mm -hmm. Yeah. John, Still, any thoughts on this you want to share? Well, again, I think because it's the Viso leaf, lower on the plant, going to have, uh, it's going to burn a little better. It, but it's also going to have different flavor characteristics than the uh, than the first. Yep. You still getting pepper? I'm getting pepper throughout. Not strong. Not as strong as the first. No, one. not as okay, strong. So we're, we're categorizing this. Good, good. Okay, we're, we we are in agreement with that. The dryness is not as relevant in this stick two than stick one, but it is. It has an element of dryness. Would you agree or not disagree? You getting that? No, I don't. I mean, I'm not finding this one too dry, honestly. Okay. I do like that there's the subtle creaminess still there. It's like a blend of the, it's the, as far as flavors go, the, I'm getting the pepper and the cream almost at the same level together. Mm -hmm. It's good. Like, I mean, I'm with Joe. I want to buy what I want to buy a five pack of these. <laughs> right. Right. Stogie Geeks rating. Uh, Get a five. Uh, <laughs> right. Right. Um, with this component there, a lot of your portfolio has, we have a lot of tobacco from Trojas Valley. Yeah. Yep. Yep. You want to name some stuff off the top of the head? That no. Year? Okay. <laughs> He's not giving a shit today. Why? You don't want to we, we, we like to let the cigars stand on their own and not uh, be a, uh, uh, have, have the, have the, where it's from being a crutch, where some people might say, I don't like Trojas. A perfect example, San Andres Maduro. Mm -hmm. uh, there are people who love it. There are people who don't like it. And if you identify yourself with as a San Andres Maduro, you're going to take a certain percentage of your market away. If you call, if you turn around and say, "Well, this is a sun-grown," mm. and all of a sudden, it 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 takes that uh, with the people who say, "I don't like Maduro." Mm -hmm. So you know, we haven't really talked about strength. Okay, I'm, as far as comparing to the, this is definitely a little stronger th for me than the first one. Yes, the first one was more entertaining. Mm. Yeah, it was it was more interesting. It was definitely more. It was, there was it was a bigger journey than this one. But I would smoke this again. But the other one definitely had more to offer. 
Right. Okay. 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 I like so, it. So now... Oh, we're going on. We're mo- John's moving us along. Now, Johnny hey. Johnny, and Go- Goose love it. Okay, we're moving on. <laughs> so now you're going to take... Hold on. I'm, I'm going to take a sip of Bloody Mary and then cl- cleanse my palate. Hold on. No, go ahead, John. You're going to take one and two. Hold them together. Okay. Like, kind of like if you're... Like a culebra. Okay, if, so yeah, this yeah. is... If, if so for the so purpose of the demonstration, this is done. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, we All can right. go back to the... Oh, so now we're doing one and two. We're not doing one, two, and three? We're going to do one and two. Oh, okay. Wow. I'm getting This old. is my party. It's his show. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I, I would have... See, this is why I don't, I don't do blending seminars. I would have done this totally differently. <laughs> Let's smoke three first. Wait, I like three. So we're lighting these two together? Yeah. No, you can light one and one. However you feel comfortable. Come on, dude. It's like a... Come on. It's like you never did this when you were a kid. So one and two together. Are we going to get to analyze three by itself? Absolutely. Okay, cool. If not, I was just going to say, okay, we're going to pause. I'm going to analyze three then. <laughs> cool. Hmm. Oh, wow. Whoa. Okay, hold on. <laughs> very, inter- very interesting. Hold on. I am not talented to go. Why'd you guys do that? There's the pepper. Okay, I think I'm ready. Yeah, it wasn't easy. <laughs> well, all right. It was, well, it's not just you, you're Joe. rookies. Uh, all right. <laughs> okay. Holy pepper! Right? Oh wow! <laughs> Whoa! That like, if you watch that on video, you you literally saw me jump up like out of my seat. Holy, holy! Definitely pepper. some strength there, dude. We're talking eye water and pepper. Like they got me. Like I jumped up. I jolted like that. I wasn't expecting that. Especially I was not after smoking e- the first two. I was not expecting that, John. Okay, let's. Uh, all right, let me grab onto my seat. <laughs> Buckle up. Mm. Okay. Uh, we've gone from zesty to zingy. Like Definitely. complete, like complete, like up. Let's say upgrade, complete, um, what is it, like, what are those things in math? Ex- exponents? Exponentially. Exponentially. Expo- thank you. That's what, <laughs> that's what I'm looking for. Dude, we, 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 we've, we've upgraded here. This is, this is getting complex. And it, it, it's, the cigar becomes the sum of its parts. Yes. And you can, and with just smoking the two together... Now you can see how it changes. I think I'm I'm more surprised at the the lack of creaminess based on what I was just smoking. Yeah. I'm not really yeah. getting any creaminess with this. You okay? <laughs> Me, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm, I was looking at your eyes. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm a <laughs> officer, I swear. It was a, it was a premium cigar. <laughs> Um. Ooh. Oh, there's lemon. <laughs> what? Were you just gonna say that? I wasn't. I was gonna say fruity. I wasn't uh, gonna say lemon. lemon. Like I wasn't gonna say lemon. Did you ever get lemon in your seminar? Sure. Yeah, yeah. I okay. like some sweetness just came through. Yeah, getting a little bit of lemon, a lot of bit of lemon. No floral yet. The pepper is jolted. But not as high as the first one. Are you getting more pepper on the retro? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Same retro, here. like Same honestly, here. you would uh, when I lit this up and, and did my first puff when I was organized to, together. Like you literally, uh, you saw me jump out. Like, yeah. like I was like, whoa. Well, that's what I said. I'm like, I just whoa. didn't expect it's it. Definitely pepper. <laughs> mm. Um. <sighs> yeah, a lot of pepper. Yeah, a lot of pepper. Super cool. Pepper and lemon. Yeah, weird. Yeah. Wow. I don't know if I got... I'm trying not to let you get in my head with the lemon. I'm sorry. I'll shut up. (laughs) Promise? No. No. Okay, so we're going to... What? What are we doing now? We're going to stop these two. Zesty. Are we going back to these two? Yeah. Okay, because I was like, I kind of, kind of want to continue. Yeah, keep going. All right, all right, yeah, all right, okay. but now we're going to go to three. Okay. 
three is again from the Trojas Valley at Lijero. Lijero. I still get that pepper. What? I still get that pepper oh, yeah, in my yeah, mouth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, different. <laughs> oh, you gotta sell these separately. <laughs> oh, very floor. I'm. I don't, hold on. I'm hoping it's not the soda water. Okay, more spice on palate than retro hail mm. for me. So let me double check that. Hold on. Nope. <laughs> it's still got a good pepper. Definitely pepper. Yeah, definitely pepper. Almost a, almost around the whole Yes. Tongue. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Um straight le, it, this is just straight lahero. Straight lahero. This is this is just one leaf. Mhm. Mm Purito. Wow. That's like all I'm getting is pepper. I can see where this is coming together. Well, it is called a blending seminar, Captain Obvious. <laughs> right. right, right. <laughs> but no, I can see. I can see where this is going. I yeah. Go I ahead. think I'm waiting for something else to come in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So having burned through all three, um, the first one was more transitional. Just to recap. Agreed. Zest, well, pepper or spice, uh, a zest, and then uh, a floral. Floral. And then going back to a little bit of a zest and pepper. So more transition. Um, second one, uh, consistent and creamy and um, pepper. And third. All right, this, this is the best way I can describe what I'm getting. Campfire. Yeah. I'm getting like campfire right now. Yeah. And I've ne I've never I've heard of that, but I've never really understood. I'm getting campfire. Yeah. Yeah. And it this I want more of. <laughs> this is really good. Mm. Definitely. So, John, uh, while we're indulging in this, <laughs> right? While we we'll, no, while while because we go, we just want to sit here and I know. Right? <laughs> right? Well, we're just enjoying this too far. There too is much. a show here, <laughs> right? Um, what do you do as a sales rep, and what have you done, obviously, over the past twenty change years that that you've been in the industry? Like, and and I know this is like the secret sauce of like a sales rep, right? You have one one blend, people love it. Your retailers call you up and say, hey, I know I ordered 10 boxes, but I need five more of X, right? Whatever X is, um, as time goes on, X always changes it, its component, right? Uh, which, which one it is, it's hot, it's hot, it's hot. The customers love it. When you see the customers, you know, they're giving you high fives. We love it. The retailer, John, I love it. It's great. Send me more, send me more, send me more. And without... Any rhyme or reason, that rides over. Like, I'm sure that's happened throughout your whole 20 years, right? Oh, absolutely. Right. So that whole concept of, of bringing that and doing that there, like, how, how, do, you, how do you go through those obstacles? Because I think that would be the biggest challenge as a sales rep, trying to find a balance of what goes in. In, 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 the, in, the, car deal, in the car business, they say there's an ask for a receipt. And uh, same thing in the cigar business. There's a there's a blend for every smoker, mm -hmm. and a lot of times when a blend is hot, when a blend is new, uh, it it encompasses everybody. Yes. But eventually, the the tide as the water lowers, it it seeks its own level, and you do always have customers for those cigars that were hot a year ago. But you now have to hope that the company is doing enough work 
in, 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 in research and development to come up with something that's going to replace that particular cigar. You know, there are some cigars that just sell. I mean, uh, you know, look at... I, 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 when I started in, in this industry, uh, there were, I don't a quarter fewer manuf a quarter of the manufacturers there are today. Correct. But, but uh, General Cigar is still selling Hoyer de Monterey's. Uh, Altidus is still selling Romeo 1875's and H. Upman's. Mm -hmm. Sure, they've had, they've all had brand extensions. Right. But that core brands, those, those cores are just smoked by a lot of people. You don't necessarily see it happening in cigar stores uh, where it's in in many cases it's what's new and exciting but you see it happening in liquor stores in convenience stores with with uh, humidors uh, where that's the uh, that's the cigar that 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 bread and butter cigar is what's selling in those maybe non-traditional smoke shops okay yeah I'm following you yeah yeah I mean they do have their their call line in that is super important. Um, you know, I, you have a call line over there. Sure. I, I like Bradley. Uh, and let, let, let's take some time and talk about that as we're, unless we need to transition out of. No, we continue. can. We've we, you got a couple more minutes on we, that. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I, w I want to talk about some of the call lines because I, I think you know it's it's um it's 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 very important for uh, Stoy Geek listeners to to understand. Uh, that you know, uh, it, it's natural for us to really like something in 2019 and not be. Uh, it, it's a natural thing, and and uh, for a consumer to like really want this, and this was my 2019 choice, whatever. And then, eh, I'm kind of over it. Is it is it stay? St is their palate going stale? You know, if you have filet mignon every day, and then you go to a nice steak restaurant, it won't be as nice than if you go to like, you know. A, a, a nice, a really nice restaurant, and right. have it. There. Or, or has it evolved? Or or, 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 or that's a great question too, right? Has um, the industry with the influx of more uh, blends, brands, collaboration, uh, regions, uh, factories coming out, the boutique revolution, as as I like to dub it, the Nicaraguan boom, as as I as as I like to dub it, the influx. The demand for the the cigar consumer to want more and more Nicaraguan there, um, from a consumer standpoint, like it's a natural thing to want to transition. So it always drove me crazy when you meet the one guy, a gal in a shop. I only smoke X, and that's that. It's yeah, like, it happens all the it's time, like, dude. You deny or chica, you're denying yourself of of much pleasure, <laughs> right? <laughs> well, you know. It's it. I, I I I went on a diet a few years ago. And decided I was going to try keto, and one of the things about keto was I could have uh, all of the meat and cheese and bacon and everything I wanted. And so for breakfast, it would be two egg McMuffins without the McMuffin. Gotcha. Uh the thought <laughs> of eating an egg McMuffin without the McMuffin right now turns my stomach because you reach a point where it just it it it, it just they, they don't the the, the the there's no satisfaction eating them the taste gets on your nerves it gets old and mm -hmm. it gets old uh right now if you're a cigar smoker you are smoking the best cigars that have ever been rolled in the history of this industry even with the staple companies in there even core. with the staple companies the collaborations as you mentioned before mm -hmm. you know uh aj fernandez is doing things with altidus and uh, uh jesus fuego is doing things with uh with uh, uh alec bradley and uh it's it it's just it, it it's a different set of eyes it's a different set of taste buds it's a different mentality that goes along with the with these different companies with these different blenders and they bring an excitement to the industry that we really didn't have during the first cigar boom 
Mm-hmm. I want to talk about the cigar boom. And John's an OG. We can get some answers <laughs> on that. Uh, is it time to transition? And I'm only asking because I'm even on sticks. Well, yeah. Let's take uh, one, two, and three. Okay. Oh. They're my three shorter now. Well, now that's why I gave you two. <laughs> I was timed out. I was. I knew where John was going now because there's less choices. <laughs> wow, Captain Obvious. Yeah, I know. Uh, that's what all my critics say. All righty. This is gonna. This is gonna be interesting. Yeah, if I don't burn my freaking fingers trying to light it, but that's good. <laughs> okay, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. I hope I'm good. Am I good? What's the technique for holding three? Cigarellos. John can do it. And I John, know. John does it in one hand. Nelson and I. <laughs> for those of you watching, they're like, yeah, John's the OG, man. He's just like, yo, this is it. <laughs> Look at Joe. <laughs> I feel like I'm about to like, reef about Joe's two hand in these suckers right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. Oh, you, guys, you guys are smart. You guys are wicked smart. Gotcha. Now, I don't know about you, and I know how much you guys like the Puritos, but this tastes like a cigar. Oh, wow. Now now my palate's like normal, not say normalized, but it's to what I've expected, right? And so... Hmm. Not as much pepper. Because no. it's balancing out. Definitely not as much pe pepper. Florals kicking in scutch, right? Because now we're at the point of that halfway yep. point of that number one yep. stick. Um, the florals kicking in. I could see that's where your transition would come from. Your zestiness would come from stick one and two in this example. Little, I'm getting the creaminess again. Yeah, subtle, not not strong, but right. I think I was expecting more pepper. Yeah, it's not good or bad. It. I think I was just expecting more. Well, you you gotta get it good, but you, it, the retro hail. Well, it, the other stuff's balancing it out. Yeah, yeah. So, Tate uh, blenders know that what the preferee the pre, pre, the prefer the pre, blah, 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 blah. With this little stick here, the preferito. <laughs> Ow. Purito. The pump side. Purito is um the the component of pepper that they're getting will eventually level out when they blend it all together. Right. Wow. Yeah. Have you noticed there's a ton of smoke too? I've noticed that throughout. Yeah. Well, you have a lighter it's not as tightly packed. That's one of the reasons there, right? You're going to get more of an influx. It's not as tightly uh, rolled uh, there. And, um, yeah, it's coming together nicely. How are you guys doing it with one hand? I don't know, but the <laughs> thumbnail for this episode should be Joe holding three cigars like a <laughs> ham and cheese sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got a lot more smoke. A little bit less pepper, but now it's balanced out. Getting that zestiness. There's something else I'm trying to figure out what it is. You're getting that creaminess. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the, it's the zest. I'm definitely getting the zest. Yep. Yep. This has certainly been an eye-opening experiment. I'm going to be surprised to hear what this ends up being. Because, like, I mean, I haven't smoked every Alec Bradley, but I don't think I've smoked this Alec Bradley. Because I think I'd remember this. Hmm. Oh, wow. And so all of these three are in this one. Right. Wow. I wonder how it'll, it'll compare, you know, the ham sandwich style to a fully hand-rolled cigar. And sandwich might taste better. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm going with that, but. Because you got to remember, as they're separate, Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I feel like I'm on like a freaking episode of Reef of Madness over here. Right? As they're separate, they're aging or relaxing or curing, whatever whatever adjective you want to use, right. right? Or verb, right, in that matter. Um in their own separate element. 
So, and so, then with that, um, like that's how like maybe some cigars, if you age them a lot, they can age out. You know what I mean? I'm gonna take some liberties here. Oh, Nelson's getting all even. Yeah, I'm gonna make him even. Here we go. Is it time to go for the big stick? Oh, family show. Yeah. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> wow. Well, I don't know. We have any more news? Oh, oh! <laughs> Who invited this guy? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a great point. I really like this. I'm, I'm really hoping the. The whole combination comes out like this. It better. <laughs> this is this is freaking good. Okay, give us some news, Nelson. Well, I thought this is actually a, a quick little discussion we could have. So, Tobacco Business Magazine did surveys of retailers uh, throughout the country in 2020, and I just pulled out some uh, some stats I thought was interesting, and I, I'd like to get Joe's and John. You're from the industry, so we'd definitely like to get your thoughts on it too. So, they asked, "How would you describe your store's 2020 sales performance?" Right. So was there an increase in sales, decrease in sales, stagnant, flat sales? So which category you think had the most? Well, uh, um, just sticks or cigar cigars. bars? Cigars. Okay, just cigars. Just cigars, I would say up. Uh, up, yeah. Up, yeah. If, it's ju if they're just doing the, the point of purchase of just premium cigars, definitely up because of consumer behavior. You have a lockdown. I want to buy more. Uh, I'm not traveling on family vacation, so I have disposable income. I would say up all day uh, with that overall business model. If you include alcohol and foot traffic yeah, yeah, and yeah, all yeah, of that, yeah. I would say down. No. But if you're talking just sticks, I, w I would say it, they, yeah, you, they've experienced an increase of stick sales. And, we, and we've talked, we've been talking about this on the on the show for a few months at least that I know of. Um, you know what's the impact of the pandemic and all that, and it, it's. Uh, it's 85% stayed flat or went up. 70% of that was up. The, there was an increase in sales. So that, that speaks volumes. You know, and I, I think one of the things we talked about on the show is there's more cigar smokers that were created in 2020 than in the last few years. And I think it's for the reasons Joe just outlined. You going to be all right? No. Do one in, <laughs> do one in three. Oh you, you, oh, you changed it up? Oh, yeah. I got to, you know. One and three. All right, here we go. Nelson, one and three. Mid news. It's called Stogie Geeks, not not John Triano Geeks. No, <laughs> I got I got Oh if, yeah, that's just, this is this is the jam. This, this is, is a completely <laughs> well, different car. <laughs> again, two Tule head of leaves. Mm. Oh wow. Do that retro. That's, that's, that's like all pepper. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. Oh my God! All right, here we go. <laughs> Holy cow, that was awesome. Okay, continue with your story. I'm All sorry. Right. Next, next one. There's only three. Um, which cigar brand is the most popular in your store? Retail store. Retail store. Oof. Uh, Just brand, not stick brand. Yeah, 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 brand, 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 brand. Um. Uh, considering that not all shops are smart enough to carry. Uh, Arthur Fluente, Padron, or Davidoff, I'd have to go with Drew. Okay. John? Well, I know I've, I've read a bunch of different other studies, and I'd probably go with uh, Fluente or Padron. Okay. Drew Estate, number one. Bay. No. Booyah. Yeah. <laughs> Padron, number two. Perdomo, number three. Mm. And Arturo Fuente was number four. Oliva came in fifth. Ah, uh, yeah. See, like I said, I based it on not all shops go for the buy-in of, of Padron. Yeah. And not all shops. And Fuente. And, and well, well, not so much for, well, well Fuente, because they kind of be a, a... Get them when something. you get them. You get them when you get them. Uh, and not all shops, uh, at least here in the Northeast that I know of, do a Davidoff buy-in. So... Um, actually shocked that Davidoff didn't even play in the top five. Not even there. Not but, shocked that Perdomo. Perdomo does extremely well in retailers. But the same reason you gave for Padron and Fuente, isn't that even more true of Davidoff? What do you mean? I'm sorry. That, like more, a lot of places either don't carry them or don't they don't, they don't bother carrying carrying them. I I don't think Davidoff is because they don't bother carrying them. I think it's just the cost of carrying them. Mm hmm. Or the or the barrier to entry. Sure. Yeah. Sure. All right. Last one. What is the most popular cigar size sold in your store? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
It, it, it has to be. It has to be either Toro or Gordo, but I think probably Toro then Gordo. Um, if it were me, I, I'm I'm a Robusto as I've expressed there, but. If I was, uh, it has to be Toro. Toro, John, what would you sell the most of? Toro's? Toro, yeah, Toro. Yeah. Toro is my final answer. Toro number one. Robusto was number two. Gordo number three. So you hit on Gordo. Really? Yeah. Gordo number. I'm sh- well. Uh, okay. Yeah. Only eleven percent of the store. Six over sixty percent of the stores said Toro was their number one. Okay. Yeah. So Toro number one, and then Robusto Gordo. Wow. Yeah. 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 I- I'm shocked at the Robusto being even a player in that. Well, wasn't Robusto the no, the number one size like back in the nineties? Oh, well, well, we get to the boom when we talk about this. Let's. Uh, well, let, right, let, right. Let, let, well <laughs> uh, uh, can we get to this? No, this time. This time. When okay. I first started in the industry, I, I had uh, Fairfield County as uh, part of my territory, and the number one selling cigar in Fairfield County was the Robusto, and the reason being, uh, gentlemen, park his car. Uh, in at the train station, walked into the newsstand, wanted a, cig- a cigar for lunchtime, picked up a Robusto because that's the amount of time he had to have it. I, that's why you like it, Joe, right? Con- yeah. yeah, I like it because of convenience. And 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 also, on the way home, he stopped in. If if he didn't have one at lunchtime, he stopped in because his drive home was going to be able to afford him the ability to smoke a right. Robusto. Yeah, yeah. I, I I that's a good point too. The the the. I like Robustos for for a taste, right? Um, I, I'm not a Gordo guy at all. Uh, I have smoked them, obviously, in there, but I've never been on that kick. Uh, but the Robusto flavor-wise, for for me, is where it's at with with that smaller ring gauge. But yeah, Toro. But I, yeah, I, that's a good point too. In the boom, where people, you know, you I remember lunchtime. Like I I remember I remember having a smoking jacket because I worked for corporate. And I didn't want to, you know, and I would have a separate blazer that I wore no every day kidding. when I smoked, right? Because when you when you work in corporate and cubicle land, you take off your blazer, you put it on the back of your chair, and then you go. But I would have a smoking jacket. Are there pictures of this somewhere? Yeah, in the trunk of my car. Yeah, I would have a smoking jacket. No, I'd have a smoking jacket in the summertime in, in New this. England. You go out and you smoke and then you're chilling. That's when you could smoke. And then you smoke or whatever and then, and then you take it off and then you put on your other jacket and you're golden. You know what I mean? You know, uh, I don't know, just different things you yeah you you pick up uh, on and and whatnot. Um, I wish people bring back the smoking jacket, but that's that's another episode. Totally. I uh, keep I keep changing my configurations with these. By the way, <laughs> John, is this next on the? This is it. This is it. So, now. so grand now, finale. The now, reveal. <laughs> now. One of the things I, I stress... No, hold on. Quiet. I got it from here. Cotton light. No, I'm only kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> One of the things I stress when I'm doing these at cigar stores... Please note, I use my Alec Bradley cutter, by the way. I, I think they did an excellent des- job on the, the design. Uh, very fi- 50s retro. Um, I think whoever designed this watches Story Geeks and says, I want to make a lighter that's... Uh, I'm sorry, a cutter that represents... Uh, Joe's 50s lifestyle, and they did that. No more kidding. <laughs> so anyhow, one of, after <laughs> <laughs> moving on, moving on. Uh, one of the things I stress when I'm doing these at cigar stores is wait, put the lighter down. Sorry. Okay. It's like school, John, John Show. <laughs> you've carved out. You've decided you're going to take an hour of your life. To enjoy the cigar mm-hmm. and there's no reason in the world to rush it so i tell everybody when you cut the cigar cold draw taste the f- tobacco before it's been lit T- taste the tobacco on the tip of your tongue to get that flavor it's not we're not in a, we're not in a hurry correct I do usually. I promise. You could tell a lot about a cigar in the cold draw. And Very true. I promise you, and anybody listening, I promise them, if you do this regularly on all the different blends and manufacturers of cigars that you smoke, 
you will be able to find if someone gives you a cigar from someone you've never heard of and you've never smoked it before, after you cut it and you cold draw and you taste the tobacco to the tip of your tongue, you'll, you'll have a pretty good idea before anything happens whether you're going to enjoy that cigar or not. Really? Can you elaborate on that once we like this? I'm serious. I'm I'm because well, uh, when I do a review, I do cut it. I, I'm excited to get to the finish line, right? <laughs> Not because yeah, of that's what your girlfriend told us. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, 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 just just because like, and I, and I normally put it in my mouth, do that, get the computer set up, get things set up, yeah. and then do what I oh whatever it is that I do, and I do slow down. I was just like I uh, I had that fresh in my mind, and I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I apologize. Okay. John, for I have sinned. <laughs> <laughs> Apology so, accepted. But but I do want to uh, you to get into that a little bit after we light this sure. up because I'd like to I'd like to hear that description. I think that'd be very educational from an OG. So I'm getting spices on the cold draw and some pepper, but I don't know if it's the pepper from what I was just smoking or from the cold draw. True. Do you get in a little like berry maybe mm -hmm. like a sweetness? Dried fruit. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yes. Yep. Can we light it now? Mm -hmm. Permission to light, Mr. Triano. The smoking lamp is lit. All right, let's do it. Oh, yeah. All now, right. Go ahead, John. Now, all three components that you smoked are in this cigar. What I want you to look at... Look, retro's there. I do the retro. Right, blow right. on the blow on the lit on the foot. And I don't know if you can see it, but you can see little tubes. Yes. Yeah. All of our cigars are rolled in tubato. Mm. So we take the leaves, roll them in a tube, and then bunch those tubes together when we put the binder on. And so what happens is you're going to get a much more uniform draw. And the experience is going to be a lot better. So this is more this is more similar to the three we were smoking than I expected. I'm definitely getting a little off the rip here. I'm getting more creamy than I did with the three. Mm -hmm. This cigar is available on the market. Absolutely. Okay. 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 I'm just. <laughs> You know, <laughs> twenty questions. Well, no, like, trying to get nah, to the... nah. We just continued it six years ago. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, it is done. Okay, and the show is over. We're gonna... <laughs> awesome. Okay, so 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 this is readily available today. Yep. I bet you. W once we are we gonna know by the end of this episode what it is? Absolutely. Okay, cool. I was hoping. Um, and um, can Nelson and I guess before we go there? Of course. Okay, cool. Uh, it's available in this shape. Yep. Okay. In the Toro. All right. Corey, okay. Mm. So flavor diagnosis, you're getting that punchy pepper right there. I do get that lingering, lingering um, flavor hanging around, right? Mm -hmm. um, picking up that zesty. Floral bouquet hasn't come in quite no. yet, but, but it, I'm, I'm not sure getting it any will. floral. I'm sure it will. For the sake of you watching, um, we're not going to burn through this whole cigar. We're just going to... Um, that would make for a long show. That would make for a long show, but we're just going to... Um, well, when, when we cut to Mike and do that, we're going to sit and enjoy and continue our conversation. But, um, you know, I just want to let you know that, you, you know, for those of you who have been patiently watching for the last hour and 20-something minutes, um, yeah, it's not going to be another two hours for us to finish this show. Uh, there, just a quick programming note. Now, one of the things I, I was going that we've done in the past is I've taken a razor blade and scored the wrapper and then peeled off about the first three eighths of an inch of the wrapper. Yes. Now, years ago, uh, there was a store in Providence. Uh, Friday nights were. Uh, somebody brought a bottle of scotch in and we'd sit around for hours smoking cigars and talking about cigars and uh, it was suggested by the manager that we do that just to see how the flavor how the, the 
the wrapper affects the flavor of the whole cigar. Mm -hmm. So again, cutting off that three eighths of an inch or so, when you were first smoking, you were smoking filler and binder. And then when it hit the wrapper, the whole profile changed. Changed, yeah. 40 to 60% of the flavor of a cigar comes from the wrapper. Uh, we also used to sit, sit down with a calculator and a, uh, and a legal pad and try to figure out how does, that, how does the thickness of a cigar change the flavor. The, the, there's, there's two functions for a, a circular cigar and, and, and that surface area, which is part of what you're smoking, and the circumference of the cigar that's part of what you're smoking. The circumference of the cigar is where you get the flavor of the wrapper. The surface area is where you get the flavor of the binder, of the filler. The, 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 to get technical, it's the difference between pi r square and pi d. Uh, when you graph it, uh, be, the, the surface area changes logarithmically Whoa. compared to the <laughs> diameter. So <laughs> no, I really feel like I'm smoking I like some reefer. I wish I could going, Google going, this right no, now. No, no, no. So <laughs> as the cigar gets fatter, is this bullshit? No. <laughs> okay. No. All right. All right that's as cool. the cigar gets fatter, the amount of flavor from the wrapper declines. Declines compared yep. to the filler and binder. And you figured this out mathematically? Yeah, we used to sit down after half a bottle of scotch. That's a <laughs> true <laughs> stogie geek <laughs> right <laughs> there. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> nice, nice. You getting citrus on this now? Yes. I'm getting citrus. Mm. Yeah. It does smoke differently, though, than, than all three together. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, I mean, it's constructed differently, too. And also, the, the tobaccos have had an opportunity to marry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, what do we guess? Well, we have to talk about the boom. Uh, I don't then, have a guess yet. <laughs> and then we have to talk about some news, Nelson. Do you have one more news? Eh. Let's do news and then boom, and then we'll do some final wrap ups on this, and and then uh, and 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 that'll be the show. I think it's awesome. And then we'll guess. We'll guess. Well, and there's a reveal, right? Yeah. Smoke In has the Great Smoke coming out, uh, the Great Smoke 2021. They do this every year. Obviously, as other events, it's going to be virtual, although they are going to have a small studio audience. Very, very, I think the tickets are actually uh, sold out, but it takes place February 20th. Uh, it's a cool event. Uh, there's uh, someone, the Steve Sock is there, uh, Melanie Cisco from, uh, well, she's not really from anything. <laughs> she's, she's like a Fuente influencer i guess um what go ahead no oh um okay and <laughs> and and a cast of, of, of other folks they're going to be attending there they keep updating the site with who's going to be there they also have entertainment that's going to be there they have comedians they have magicians you're going to be it's eight hours of virtual smoking event that's cool there is a side event, which I wish I was in Florida. Steve Saka is going to be doing a barbecue down in Florida for the event. And it's a, it's, he has the meat lover cigar. So he's going to be doing a meat lover's barbecue with ribs and steaks. It's like, I forget how much it is, like a hundred something dollars sure. to attend. Good times. But uh, you can get your quote unquote ticket for the virtual event. It's 169 for the ticket. Uh, it includes a huge swag bag. They, it's over $425 value. This, 40 cigars in there, including Alec Bradley. That's in there as well. Uh, you get a cap, a swag, a humidor. You get all kinds of stuff. So that's coming up. You can go to thesmokein.com to check that out. But uh, it's a pretty cool uh, smoking event that's taking place while we're not really having events. So something different. Yeah, I think virtual events are, are uh, a thing. And they are going to uh, be a thing. Uh, working in um, cybersecurity field, eight hours of... Content uh, on a daily basis is pretty easy. Uh, Johnny, our producer, and Gustavo, our producer, uh, assistant producer, I don't know if he has a title yet, um, can tell you that uh, we do that on a, on a uh, quarterly basis anyway here at Security Weekly. 
And um, yeah, you have to have the the different entertaining components, different things, different things to, to, to get people going. But I think what's super cool is they get a, a bag of whatever the, the swag bag is. Everybody gets the same thing. People can smoke, talk about it, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And, and be a good experience for, for people to yeah, do. Yeah, you'd get it if you actually attended the event, but they yeah. still offer it so you can do it virtually and you still get the bag. Yep. So it's yep. pretty cool. Yeah, that um, virtual is will be a thing through at least Q3 of next year, if not Next more. year. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, I keep them. The, we're, we're in 20. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah with uh, nine more months. Sure. Right. <laughs> nine, nine more months next year. Yeah. Happy New Year. Yeah, um, definitely, uh, for sure. And and I wonder what events are going to look like. Not so much events that like you would attend to. You know, they have 50, 60, 70, 80 people. Uh, they are spaced out accordingly, etc. But like cons, like ma- concerts, uh, different things. I don't know. Like Vegas is going to be out a lot of money. Well, not, not a lot of businesses going to be out because because uh, you have the spillover effect of businesses that benefit off of people who go, you know, like you think about it, like for example, here in Rhode Island, the Providence Bruins, Boston Bruins affiliate is now moving up to Marlboro, place up to Marlboro yeah. there and whatnot. And like, you know, people who would go to a game would go to a restaurant after the game. Maybe they would go to a cigar shop. Maybe they would go to a bar. Maybe they would spend money, make an evening of it, et cetera, et cetera. And now that goes away. You just go to the specific event. Um, even though the virtual event or the event itself can make money, but the spillover effect of stuff, doesn't right and that that's going to be detrimental to shame, yeah. a lot of businesses as well john let's talk about the boom how was that like you like, lived it <laughs> like i mean when i was in the industry as a retailer i was a uh, uh, extreme tail end of of boom and it was a boom um not gonna lie like crazy boom buying cigars out of trash bags uh because they Sales reps were delivering them that way. Like, it was like Santa Claus. Like, when I say trash bag, I just want to give you a visual. Like, like they would just have all the bags and just freaking boom. And because reps dropped off, reps sold um, cigars out of their cars, Absolutely. All, all vehicles, right? Yes. So, so, you remember doing that, right? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, take us to, so I'm not off my rocker when, when, you know, you order 40 boxes, they're not going to just, and, and they were individual, they were still cellophane. But they would just throw them in a trash bag and they end up in there, and then you could just go and cut so did check. You, did you come in, Joe? In the, it, it, I know he's going to take us through the journey, but did you come in in the middle of the boom or right before the boom? So you saw the boom start right, right before the boom and ended. Like okay, the boom, the boom was on. So you got to experience uh, it, yeah. experience a little bit of it and whatnot, and 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 whatnot. But it was it was a different time and atmosphere. But I want you instead of hearing my stories over and over again. Uh, I want you to get John's perspective on it because, I mean, obviously, he's boots on the ground sales rep. Um, although it was for a different company, concept and sales is still the same. Take us through that. Well, I, I started kind of in a, uh ancillary business. I was selling match, match, books, match books and match boxes. Mm-hmm. And I had all the cigar stores in, the, in New England. And... Uh, a number of my customers said to me, uh, you should be selling cigars. You're real good. We really enjoyed working with you. And I said, well, yeah, how do you do it? You know, where do you, how do you get an interview? And one of the companies was interviewing. And uh, went on the interview. I didn't get hired. Uh, so, okay. Went back to what I was doing. But in the meantime, one of my customers in Boston was having a cigar, a restaurant, was having a cigar dinner. And they invited me. They said, hey, you're one of our best reps. We want you to come in. And, and I said, well, I don't smoke cigars. And ah, no, come on, have a good time. It's the best menu of the year. So I went, had a few beers, had a big bag of cigars. They said, oh, let me give it a try. What the heck? First cigar I ever smoked was a, a, a little boutique cigar out of Miami, Warren Baudet, mm-hmm. Connecticut uh, mild cigar. And I fell in love with it. It was... I couldn't believe how great it was. And having a somewhat of a uh, uh, personality that gets, uh, when you do things, I jump in with both feet. I went into every cigar store now and buying cigars and trying them. And it was tremendous. Just so happens about uh, three months after that company rejected me, they called me up and said, hey, 
uh, we have that opening happened again because the rep that took it is going to take another territory. We want you to cover New England for us. Uh, and it was just a blast. I mean, you, you went into every different place. As you said, we sold out of our, our the truck of the car. Mm -hmm. uh, we had display units with uh, tubes, and we had uh, uh, wooden boxes with tubes. And you'd go into a convenience store. Hey, do you sell cigars? No. Well, how would you like to get in the business? And he'd say, okay. He'd say, here. And, and taxes at the time, Rhode Island didn't have a tobacco tax. Massachusetts didn't have a tobacco tax. Wow. Connecticut didn't have a tobacco tax. Holy so cow. you could just say, here, give me $95. Give you the money. And then you have to pay for it send a check to the company to pay for it after you sold i don't know 10 or 12 they would ship you cases of uh, of cigars um the biggest uh, the biggest thing was uh was back orders and like anything else uh you uh you had to manage it you had to make sure you you took care of your customers and uh I was at the uh, the second Orlando show that was held in the Marriott World Trade Center uh, uh, basement, for lack of a better word, the convention center. Mm -hmm, because and they, at the time, they couldn't do a whole floor. Like you wouldn't, when they had the big cons, they it wouldn't there wouldn't be enough volume to like do like the grand ballroom or whatever. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. it was just the it was their convention center. Hey, wait, what what year are we talking here? What decade? I want to say. 97 or 98 and uh we're, we're we're in there and everybody's having a good time and it's, people are writing orders and back and forth and somebody walked in with a newsweek magazine and the, the cigar boom was on the cover and i looked at it threw the magazine on the table i said that's over everybody said to me you're crazy we're gonna grow we're gonna grow we're gonna grow i said it's the cover of Newsweek. It's the cover of Time. It's done. Rides over. It's drawing attention. It's yeah. Drawing, yeah it's, well, rides over for a couple of reasons, right? It's tax-free. Well, Not anymore. Tob tobacco tax. To it's it's tobacco taxed less. But yeah. It's not tax-free entirely. Yeah. It, and, it's tobacco taxed less. And, and let's face it. Most trends start on both coasts, and they work their way into the middle. And when it hits Middle America is when Newsweek or Time realizes it and they put it on the cover. So that was in August. A uh, couple of people uh, bailed after that. And then slowly but surely I could see business was slowing. I heard there was an opportunity with one of the top three companies in the industry. Put out some feelers. And uh, got an interview, got the job, and I was there for 18 years. But uh, but at by that time, the boom was pretty much over. Mm -hmm. And now we were <laughs> going to stores and trying to move inventory around from one store to another because somebody might have been heavy on Upman's but light on something else. So we would move the cigars around. So what what are you thinking about now like last 5 years last year seeing what you saw before do you see any signs of that coming back uh not really when I, when 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 the boom happened everybody was totally unprepared for it or at least all the manufacturers were and they were getting salesmen from in in some cases where where manufacturers had a domestic cigar division and a premium cigar division they were getting guys out of domestics to sell the premium cigars everybody was a learning curve everybody was learning about cigars we were teaching about cigars and because the consumers all wanted to know because they didn't know anything you know cigar aficionado took off because the consumers really didn't know anything the, and and for the longest time cigar aficionado was educating people they still do, more so now online than they do in the uh, in the uh, in the magazine, and uh, so for for the first events, cigar dinners, events in stores, con kind of events, 
Uh, I remember going down, you mentioned Steve Soccer earlier. I remember going down to the Javits Center in New York where they had a big uh, cigar event and running into Steve down there. And uh, just, you, you just, it, it, was a, it was a great party. It was a great family. It was a great group of people. And the education then became a little less important. Now I was more enjoying the product. But now, that's, that's, a, that's a generation ago. 20 years ago, is a, it's a new generation. The 50-year-old guy who was just getting into cigars 20 years ago, 70. The 14-year-old kid who didn't know anything about cigars. 18, then, John, 18. Is now 34. Right, right. So he wants to learn. So it has, so, so it's kind of gone 360 degrees where, again, we're into education. What we did today is a whole model of, of, of educating the consumer. Mm -hmm. So you started, like, literally selling out of the back of your car. Yeah. True. And then when you switched over to the bigger corporation, was stuff shipped there or did they still ship it to you? We did a little of both. Okay. We did a little of both. We did uh, uh, the uh, uh, out of the back of the car because again you had to move cigars around. If somebody was heavy in something, you wanted to, uh, and but you knew somebody else needed it, you could move it to them. Uh, but mostly it was it was direct sales. Take the order, call the company, mm -hmm. or do it on the on on the order website, and the company would ship. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, it was straight out out of your oh, car. Oh, again, a, go a, anywhere. A bit of both. A yeah. bit of both. Go into like the malt shop. Like I remember, <laughs> like we, like you, you and I are, are from the same town now. But I grew up in the next town over as a little kid. But we live in the same town now. And like I remember going to like Delectus Pharmacy, and like you could, my grandfather would get cigars and at I the would, pharmacy. And, yeah, and, 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 and I would get a milkshake or like a uh, 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 candy cigarette. Like, oh, you know, your candy cigarette or whatever. And sure. He would just walk with his cigar. We would walk back. And and that was it, man. It took us like three hours because we would walk down to the pharmacy. I'd have a, a milkshake or a cabinet, as we say here in Rhode Island. Right? Long story about the each of them. Right? But anyway, you know, you have a cabinet. And, and I would have my milkshake. And, have, and you smoked it in the place. You smoked well, it. Well, then, and, yeah. You, <laughs> this is the 80s, dude. You smoked them in the place, dude. Like, you know what I mean? Even when I had the cigar shop, you could smoke in restaurants in Providence after 10 o'clock at night. Remember, you know, you Google Hemingway's in Providence, right? Or uh, Gracie's uh, in Providence. Or um, uh, Capriccio's in Providence, Rhode Island, right? Like, after 10 o'clock, I remember going there, and we would go there at 10 o'clock, and we would sit down at the bar. And we would have either oysters or dinner, right? Because you eat late. We're in our 20s, right? You eat late. Um, after the cigar shop was closed, we ate and lit up a smoke and stayed there and wow. drank. Wow. In, in the middle of Hemingway's. And it's funny because, like, like, Hemingway's, right? You would think about family events, right? Like, when my brother graduated from the police academy, right? The whole family went to a private room in Hemingway's. And I remember just sitting back and looking at the bar, and I just crack a smile. And like, I remember just sitting at that bar and just ripping a cigar, dude. Going to Gracie's um, before I switched over to, to Tannamy Hall, and we'd have a cigar dinner with, with, with our company, Spotted Dog Cigar Company, and Gracie's, and have a dinner, and then like a Johnny Walker blue, red, black, sure. and there's one more, green. I know they're not in a the white order. Blue's the best, right? Then green, then red, then black, if I were going from greatest to the... Anyway, having, having a thing and like, like having a tasting and doing that, and like you're in a restaurant, man, and you're eating freaking Kush of Z Bar, which I'm showing my age. Z Bar on Wicked Street was right down there, dude. We would like order our food. We would call and say, "Yeah, can we have three places at the bar?" Because we were like three doors down, right? Isn't that a rock band? Three doors down, yes. yeah. Anyway, <laughs> right? Well, and, and and like um, well, rock band. Anyway, um, and 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 you, we would just like uh. Say yeah, we have three seats at the bar. Well, it, it's us and the spotted dog. We'll be there in ten minutes, and we'd order the food. So when we sat down, we ate, and we lit up a smoke, and no one said nothing, because people were smoking cigarettes. People were chilling. Uh, it, was, it was a different era. It was a different era. So you would you went to the cigar shop, 
you had your cigar with your comrades, right? Or, 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 or you know, uh, compadres, friends, whichever. Then you grab the next two cigars because you were going bar hopping. Wow. You know so what I mean? Different. Like it's a freaking different world. So different. It, it's a different world. Now I'm blessed to have participated in that, but it's just not as fun. You know I what mean, I mean? Like it's not. If we're gonna go down memory lane, a quick story. So I remember when I was in my 20s, my buddy and I, we thought it was cool to smoke cigars. So we just, but we were gas station cigar guys. Sure. Because we didn't know yeah. enough to go to find a humidor. Actually, there was nothing around us. Uh, where I grew up in Massachusetts. So I can remember at night being in a Dunkin' Donuts, smoking cigars and drinking coffee Yep, in the Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, I remember. Well, most just true tobacco shops weren't, weren't lounges then. And they closed at 6 o'clock at night. Oz was, was on Wicked Street in Providence and had a slightly younger crowd. We were next to the Wicked and Pub, right? So we stayed open till freaking 10. And if it was dead, we closed at 9. And by the way, it was the tail end of the cigar boom. When we closed at 8, because we just really, you know, 70 hours in a place would make you stare crazy, we put a sign on the door. We're at Hot Club, especially in the summer. We're at Hot Club, and we'd have a duffel bag of cigars, and we would sell, so we would give cigars away, and then people would come back to the cigar shop the next day to pay what they bought. Oh, wow. Like, and, and it was really on your honor system, because we were drinking, right? So I was like, yeah, Joe, you got two of this, two of the, all of the Nestas. Remember the old Nestas? Just yeah. Nestas, a lot of Robustos, right? Oh, I, I want two of those, and you got any of that? Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, man, just stop by tomorrow. It wasn't like an exchange of money. We were doing that, and, and Owen was cool with it because when we showed up, we would show up there. There was one day. It's always like that first day of when, like, here in New England weather, like, you get, like, the first gorgeous day. We weren't sitting in a cigar shop. Everybody was doing enjoying the first gorgeous day. We'd fill a duffel bag full, a backpack full of cigars, and walk down to the hot club. And we'd be there from noon till n- outside n- noon till midnight. Yeah. And there was sometimes we'd have to run back up the shop, get more, and get more cigars. <laughs> <laughs> and the people would come back. It's crazy, dude. And owner was cool with that because why? Because with us, 20, 30 people are sitting at a freaking. Section on the deck, just smoking cigars, hanging. The owner knows, hey, these guys are gonna be here for two hours. They ain't gonna have just one drink. You know what I mean? So it was just, it was just a different era. When I was in the uh, when I was in the match business, <clears throat> we used to uh, on on Wednesdays there was a a, a young lady in in Boston. Uh, she went by the moniker of the cigar lady, and she would uh, work out of both Peretti's and Ehrlich's. At at the time, mm-hmm. and, and knock on doors in off in the office buildings, law firms, wherever, and peddle cigars. And she'd wow. she'd, she'd go in and take orders on a Monday and deliver Wednesday. Somebody would order Wednesday, she'd deliver Friday. But Wednesday nights, she used to have an event down in the uh, downtown in the financial district, at one of the uh, one of the bars, and uh, they would provide some food. And usually it'd be a different distiller or a different beer company that would provide liquor to taste. And the beauty of it was, because I always worked after a, a, I figured it out, I would work Boston on Wednesday because I could stay there till 7, yeah. 30, 8 o'clock and then drive back to Bristol uh, and, and not hit any traffic. Right. And have a good night. And have a good, and have night. A good night. And have a good night. Yeah. That's what escalated me. I, when I was with corporate, I was working in Waltham up that 128 strip. And I would get out of work and go hit a cigar shop up there. I'd go to like Watch City or Courthouse Cigars up in Dedham. Sure, yeah. Right? Because I would go there. You know, you drive 20 minutes to Dedham through the back road, sit at Courthouse Cigars. Then at 7 o'clock and I'll boot home. But if I left home at 5 o'clock, I'd be home at 7.10. So what the heck's 50 minutes? Right. It's 50 minutes and I enjoyed my cigar. And met people who I would you know wouldn't normally meet. Yeah, and it was just a different world, different, totally different world. Oh, it, was, it it was fun then, and it's still fun today. Yep, it's just different today. That's all. It's different. I was gonna say it's different fun. Yeah, it's different. You know. Uh, cool. We need to do the uh before we wrap up the show. We need to do oh, final yeah. tasting. We need to do final tasting notes and the reveal. You want to do a reveal first and notes? Or no, notes? let's do the notes. Okay. Um. Nothing, go. Well, I've continued to get pepper and citrus through. I mean, this has pretty much been consistent for me. 
I think the pepper increased a little bit as I've been going. I definitely getting fruit. And that there's a subtle of the campfire in there somewhere. Yep. I like it. But I mean that, that I would say the predominant flavors I'm getting is the the pepper. I could definitely get it on the retro hill in the in the back of my palate. Um the citrus, I don't have the floral keeps coming up, but I don't think it's the floral. Haven't done here's my takeaway and you can chime in as as we go. Um haven't done uh this is my third blending uh seminar that I've that that I've uh mentioned and and the format of all three are completely different. It gives me an appreciation of the importance of smoking your cigar slower. Yeah. So you can drag out all of the components of the cigar, any cigar. I don't care what it is. But, and I've often said this here when I started Story Geeks and I would do a review and then I do a review, like as the years progressed and I'm starting my fourth year here, right? Um, it, the. If every year I've smoked cigars slower, but haven't gone through this, I think I'm going to smoke them even slower. It, it, you've, like I said earlier, you're taking, you've, you've made a conscious decision to say, how many times have we talked about this? You drop your son off. Yeah. You know, and so if, if by dropping your, if you know you've got 45 minutes, yep. don't buy a Churchill. Right, I buy a Robusto. Right. If you know you've got an hour, buy a Toro. If it, it, there's nothing, I, I don't think there's anything worse than having cigar. Uh, c- c- when I when I'm driving home, if 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 I'm ten minutes away from home, I've got half a cigar. I'm 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 kind of upset. Right. <laughs> yeah. I drive around. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I drive around, or, or I'll Go take a long, a long way. way home and, <laughs> and do that there. And yeah, 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 for sure. So. Question. Yes. W- would you buy this cigar? I would. See, I think whatever it is, like I'm trying to go through a Rolodex of, of your portfolio in my head, right? And whatever it is, it's going to give me a new, found, uh, 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 a new appreciation of the process. And not the Alec Bradley process or the, just the whole process of that. And the importance of slowing down um, the cadence of smoking, and 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 truly enjoying that, and and I've picked up tons of tidbits here today, um, there. But getting back to the components, I can see where there is a fusion of how we had the separation. My only. Um, thing moving forward is how is how's my brain gonna like not want to do that for like almost every cigar we spoke <laughs> you know what i mean because it truly is an educational experience for you story story geeks out there uh definitely you want to uh go to a blending seminar seminar when you know covid restrictions open up and things open up or if your local t- tobacconist is doing that uh there too uh yeah, even though you can't break them up, you can still identify, you know, you still know what the wrapper binder filler is, and you can try different sticks. And to Joe's point, smoke, it's so, one of the things I power smoke, it's no question. When I first started, I did exactly what John said, which was take my time, really experience it, and I, I think I've gotten bad at that. I power smoke now. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, great, great point on that. Yes. But definitely slow down, but I think you can still sort of get this experience if you try different binders fill it and then try to taste them which i think you've actually talked about what that you can smoke something and be like all right i know this is a honduran wrapper sure. or, right right yeah. yep i think you can start to get to that if you do it s- slower and experience more of the the different leaves well remember when i said before about cutting it and cold drawing it and tasting the, the tobacco to right. the tip of your tongue altitus makes one of the what i believe one of the finest cigars that money can buy in the Romeo Vintage Toro glass tube, mm-hmm. it's a mild cigar. If your if your tastes aren't to mild cigars, I'd say give it a try. But the thing that I've noticed with that cigar is when you cut it and you cold draw and you taste the tobacco to your tip, you're going to get that fruity. You're going to get the dried fruit, the 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 little bits of uh, a fruit that you see in a fruit cake. Yep. Kind of 
yep. taste to it. It's real sweet, but when you light it, the cigar just smokes tremendously. And to 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 the to that point, that's why uh, that's why I do it. And that was probably one of the first cigars I ever did it to. Mm-hmm. Here's how I want to um, to uh, if you look at the logistics of the show, this process usually takes about two hours, right? We 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 didn't rush through it at all. No, right. We, we used to talk to corporate Alec Bradley and do a virtual event. So in other words, I'm making the time up 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You come here in studio, do that, do an online broadcast, ship product to them before, and give the story geeks an opportunity to have a virtual blending seminar. You know yeah. what I mean? Okay. Like, I'll- like have them do that because I number one and and we we can arrange it so that they can have questions and answers. They can either flash us an email or whichever as we're going through, as opposed to going through uh, either uh, different stories or, or maybe do like an Alec Bradley um, profile of each stick intertwined or something like that. But put together a virtual event to do one of these, but not only for just us saying, "Hey, look what we did," and they could do it, right. but for that Stogie Geeks listener. Uh, who would like to participate in that? Stogie Geeks, if you want to participate in that, email me at joeh at stogiegeeks.com um, just so I can get kind of like a marching tally to report back to corporate Alec Bradley and let them know uh, if there is an interest for that because I truly think that um, that would be a super cool experience to, to do one of these. Do it together, yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So it would be basically the same format. Uh, I don't know. Do you have other blends that you have this for? Yes, or, yes, oh, we do. Or even better. So maybe we can do one a quarter, and and then boom, and then there you go, and then throw in some some commercial spots. That would in be there. really cool. Yeah. It would be so cool because now we would get feedback, and we can take care of that technology wise. All you got to do is show up and smoke cigars. Can yeah. you stay up past nine? <laughs> <laughs> I busted your balls, John. Come on. Just because there's snow in the roof. <laughs> you know what I mean. So that's all good. Um. Yeah. Uh, final final thoughts on this b- b- before John and I or you request a reveal or try to like. What do you think it is? Like, like it, it's so tough, right? Because because so, we've had all the different components. I think it's even tough because again, I haven't had a. Uh, I've had so I've had the the Tempest, the Quorum, the Prinsado is one of my favorites. Uh, I'm I'm gonna guess the America. The America? That's my guess. Mm. It's a solid. That's a. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm. I don't know. I mean, it's not a filthy hooligan. There's no Condella. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Whoa. So that eliminates Captain that. Captain Obvious. Right. Right. Uh, it's not a Pensado. It's not shaped like that because I asked you that before. Yeah. I was thinking black market, but I think it's too light to be a black market. Yeah. It's weird, right? Because I'm kind of like, eh, maybe it's a black market. Um, you know, uh, I'm not too sure. But I, I know it's not a max. I know that. Um, I, America's a good choice. That's a, that's, a, that's a solid choice. I don't know. All right there. That's a solid choice. Do you want to give us what it is? Well, uh, you mentioned Tempest. You said you smoked it. Was it the natural or the uh, Nicaraguan? The natural. This is the natural? This is the Tempest Natural. Son of a gun. The original? The original Tempest Natural. Like the OG original? Well, the ones that we're selling today. No kidding. I wouldn't have guessed that. No. No, no. So this is a Tempest Natural. Yeah. So you would get a floral bouquet, pepper, Zest, lemon, all of that jumped into one. Wow. Now, I I wonder, so now I'm going to wait, smoke one, because we did this after dissecting it first. Yeah, so so all of those different components are super fresh in your brain. Exactly. I'm wondering, will I get the same experience? Well, you notice you have a second one. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, question. Did you like all three compared to this, or... I can taste the difference. I this uh, the T2, whatever it was, yep. the, the second one, probably my least favorite. Mm-hmm. I think it's just because it was st- stronger for me. 
Um, the first one I like because of the transitions. Yes. Right? The the first one fascinates me. And I, while the third one was a little more peppery than the other two, I, I like that. Again, a camp. I, I keep describing it as a campfire, but I, I really enjoyed that. And I did get some of that on the actual Tempest itself. It was good. Tempest Natural. You got me, John. You, yeah, yeah. Because I was like, I don't know if it's a black market. Black market's, to me, a little bit more punchier, right? The black market Esteli, by the way, home, home, home run on that stick there. Uh, Project 40, uh, home run on that stick. Um, I talked about that when I was on my way up to upstate New York and I got stopped by the cop. And the only thing that ruined my Project 40 uh, was the uh, three hundred and eighty dollar ticket that I got uh, from from Bolton up there? Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, don't do ninety uh, on your way up to up, upstate New York uh, with Rhode Island plates, FYI. Uh, anyway, um, officer, I should have known better. My brother's on the job. Yeah, that's great. License and registration. <laughs> 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 Those New York guys don't mess around. Uh, there you go. Um, and then I've often said, like, that week, so that was pre-COVID, so that was October of 19. Yes, yes, yeah, because we just did 20, yeah. So October, that was October of 19 time frame, right? And I, and I said, so probably give or take a couple weeks with Story Geeks reality to catch up and then get filmed and processed out. So November of 2019, I remember saying I'd be fascinated if Project 40 came out with a Maduro. And then lo and behold, you guys did. And uh, super cool. You get that's a interesting stick. By the way, the dry draw, cold draw on on that um, Project Forty Maduro, lots of berries, lots of um, um, dark cherry yeah. on there. Uh, super cool uh, stick there. Always a fan of the filthy hooligan. I liked the when it was the uh, all Candela instead of Baba Pole. Uh, super fan of the the Tempest um, natural. Uh, there too, and uh, looking forward to, uh, to what what you guys are coming out, and then also with Alec and Bradley, um, with the launch of 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 their latest, um, you know, you guys got a lot of super t- uh, cool cool things coming up. So, looking forward to what's coming out from. Like Alec I said, and I wake up every morning, can't wait to go to work. Can't believe I get paid to do it. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, just so you know how this concept of this interview started, uh, it was in a restaurant parking lot in the morning when John just was going through his things like, hey, how you doing? Hey, uh, yeah, here's some sticks. How's everything going? Yeah, how's story is going? Good. I haven't seen you in a while. And then he was like, we should go do a seminar. That was what, 2019? Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, uh, like I said, it's always on my list of things to do. Nelson is uh, knows that in my world there's a true thing of list of things to do yes there is you know um but yeah john anything else you want to add no no just thanks a lot i, I this was uh a, a totally unique experience and uh look forward to doing it again yeah we should do a virtual one of these and do what are they called now virtual hearths yeah virtual blending hearth yeah and yep stogie <laughs> geeks virtual blending hearth. yeah dude we should do like do this stogie geeks alec bradley Virtual. We can put Alec Bradley first. Now we're getting no, to no, marketing. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> right? Alec Bradley presents. Oh, there you go. Alec Bradley. <laughs> let's, let's figure this out before we go. Alec Bradley presents a blending seminar with Stogie Geeks. I see headlines. Fifty nine ninety nine. No? I don't know how much <laughs> these things cost. I don't know how much they cost. It depends. You you could make it. You could make it ninety nine ninety nine and throw in freaking five or ten sticks and give them a whole Alec Bradley uh, platform. They yeah. can figure that out. All That's aside. all going to be figured out in a boardroom. <laughs> I, I love that idea of the also giving the the audience a chance to actually have it with them. I mean, that's it's just going to be awesome if we, if we can pull this off. I think it'd be a cool customer service thing to do, and I want to add that's one component because I get a lot of emails saying, "Joe, you, Nelson, Drew, previous host, you guys always talk about this lounge experience." I live forty five minutes to an hour to the nearest lounge. I don't have a lounge life that you speak of, right? And now we're going to bring that lounge over to them. Then we can logistically pull it off because we do it here at Security Weekly all day, every day. 2021, um, baby. So, yeah, so absolutely. Um, that'd be super cool if we could put that all together. 
um yeah john thank you for your time thank you thank you for the opportunity um thank you for being in the industry and um yeah john made me an ambassador way back in the day so when i talk about yeah i was a cigar ambassador as well and did that this pre-influencer we were on 56k modem then um you know and and did and did that there and yeah you didn't have internet fame we i didn't i did not have internet fame like nelson and the other chick uh there right but john seriously thanks for this is my i know joe joe said it's his third this is my first really cool experience i mean he had talked to me about this over the summer at one of the dinners we were at and i just thought that was a really really neat idea i i know other people do it but to actually get to experience it very very cool yeah well thank you yeah absolutely john thank you i want to thank alec bradley cigar company for uh put putting this together uh as well um be cool if we could do another one with the boys too we'll see you know what i mean <laughs> tear apart that tear apart that kintsugi is it Kintsugi? That Kintsugi. Kind of, yeah, Kintsugi. All right. I want to make sure. Hey, that's probably the first cigar name I didn't butcher. <laughs> that's probably the hottest to pronounce. <laughs> anyway, uh, Story Geeks, thank you for watching and listening. Remember, we keep the conversation going all week long. Visit our website, StogieGeeks.com. Email all of your complaints to Nelson at StogieGeeks.com. Behind every cigar, I want to remind you there's a story worth knowing. Get out there and speak to your local retailer. Everyone be safe. Thank you for watching and listening. Story Geeks, we will see you next time. Peace.